Uh, Patricia Munoz. And probation, this is an application for deferred. Court is calling 2024 CR 2942 State of Texas versus Patricia Munoz. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Jason Durahan, Your Honor. For the defense? Anthony Cantrell. Are you Patricia Munoz? Yes, Your Honor. All right, defense, you filed a motion to quash the indictment. Are you withdrawing that motion? We are, Your Honor. Any objections to withdrawal of the motion? Uh, no, no. All right, then the motion is withdrawn by defense. All right, Ms. Munoz, did you review the document entitled Application for Deferred Adjudication with your attorney? Did you understand it and did you sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have you received all the discovery and did you review it with your client? Yes, Your Honor. The court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Did yes, you Your review Honor. the true bill of indictment with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, do you weigh the reading of the indictment? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, state, it appears that you only proceeding on count one. That is correct. Any objections to the waivers of count two? No, Your Honor. Any uh, state, are you proceeding with the party language? They are not, Your Honor. We are not. Judge, yeah, just the state's replacing Jason Graham with Zach. All right, thank you. All right, Ms. Munoz, did you review the document entitled Court Admonishments and Defendants Waivers and Affidavit of Admonitions with your attorney? Yes, did sir. you understand it? Yes. Sir. Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, sir. Did you understand you're charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon? That's a second degree felony. Range of punishment is anywhere from two to 20 years in prison and up to $10,000 fine. Did you understand? Yes, sir. If you have a plea with the state, court does not have to follow your plea. If for any reason the court does not follow your plea and gives you more than you bargained for, the fact that you entered a plea will not be used against you and you will be allowed to withdraw your plea. Did you understand? Yes. Did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross-examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes. Did you understand by entering this plea you were giving up those rights? Yes, Your Honor. And did you intend to give up those rights and enter into a plea in this case? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand if the court were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, if for any reason your deferred adjudication were revoked, the court could fine you guilty and sentence you up to 20 years in prison. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right, go off the record for a moment. Could you mute us, please? If any value to Jason emailed uh, the relevant people, Lane and others, like 10 minutes ago. Okay. All right, so we're back on the record. All right, did you review the plea bargain page with your attorney? Oh, I'm so sorry. Counsel, uh, do you believe your client is currently competent and was yes. legally sane at the time of the offense? Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Munoz, has anyone threatened you, coerced you, or placed you in fear to get you to enter this plea? No. Anyone promised you anything other than the plea? No, Your Honor. Are you satisfied with the way you've been represented? Yes, Your Honor. Are you a U.S. citizen? Yes, Your Honor. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived her right to jury trial. Did you review the plea bargain page with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. According to the plea bargain agreement, state is proceeding on count one. State will remain silent on your application for deferred adjudication. There's an affirmative finding of family violence. There's to be no contact with Miranda Medellin, no contact with Renee Vasquez II. Did you understand that to be the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Defense, is that the plea? It is the plea. State, is that the plea? Yes, Judge. Did you review the waiver of appeal paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in both places? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand by signing that you're waiving your right to appeal? The only items that can be appealed are written pretrial motions that have been filed, heard, and ruled upon by the court. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Counsel, have there been any such motions? No, Your Honor. All right. And did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition? 
Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand with an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to be designated as primary custodial parent? Yes, Your Honor. And outside the Sorry, agreement. Your Honor, I need to just. Put yes. This. Yes, Your Honor. We would like to orally strike, and we can do it on paper as well, the affirmative finding, Your Honor. All right. So here's the thing with the affirmative finding of family violence. I need to put you on notice what that means. Now, I will read through the police reports, and if it's a family violence matter, then I'm going to find there's an affirmative finding of family violence. But if it's not, then I won't make that finding. Does everyone understand? Understood. Yes, sir. All right. So outside the agreement, uh, in the event that I do not grant your application for deferred adjudication, the state is going to recommend that your punishment be set uh, capped at, a, at four years in the prison. Did you understand that would just be a recommendation from the state and the court would not have to follow that recommendation? Yes, Your Honor. So do you understand that if the court does not grant your application for deferred adjudication, the court could sentence you up to 20 years in prison and up to a $10,000 fine? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Then to count one, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest. And Judge, I, that's not how we... I'm sorry this plea has gotten so cumbersome. Uh, the cap, there was supposed to be a cap of four years, so you could send her, sentence her from two to four years. No. Y'all are not allowed to tell the court if she's applying for deferred adjudication how much I can sentence her to if I don't follow your agreement. I mean, I'll take it in consideration if I were not to, I'm sorry, not agreement. Um, your plea bargain is that the state is to remain silent on your application for deferred. So what that means is the state is not going to tell me that they don't want you to have deferred. They're not going to tell me that you, they do want you to have deferred. Hypothetically, if I were to grant your application for deferred adjudication, the state can make a, make, make a recommendation and say, judge, we want her in deferred adjudication for six years. Eh, I could say, well, no, I'm only giving her four. I still will have followed your plea bargain agreement. Or, oh, well, I'm giving her eight years deferred adjudication. I will still follow your, I will still have followed your plea agreement. The suggestion that your uh, sentence be a cap of four, that's not a part of your plea agreement. The part of the uh, outside the agreement is if I do not grant your application for deferred adjudication, then the state will ask that you be sentenced to no more than four years. But I don't have to sentence you to four years. I could sentence you to more than four years. Am I going to do that? I don't know. Am I going to grant your application for deferred adjudication? I don't know because I'm going to need a PSI report. So that's the agreement. And if people don't understand that as agreement, and want to withdraw, you're more than welcome to withdraw. But as far as the state's recommendation of a cap of four years, if you don't receive deferred adjudication, that's just something for me to consider. But I don't necessarily have to follow that. Understood. Um, <clears throat> we'll still go forward. All right. So does everyone understand that if the court would not to grant the application for deferred adjudication, that I could potentially sentence you up to 20 years in prison. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, do you understand that the fact that the state would perhaps recommend or will recommend a cap of four if I don't grant your application for deferred adjudication, that's just something for the court consider. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. And do you understand that if I were not to grant your application for deferred adjudication and the state were to recommend that you be sentenced to two years, three years, or four years, and I decided to sentence you to 10 years, that will not have violated your plea bargain agreement. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Then to count one, my understanding you've entered a plea of no contest. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. State any evidence? Yes, Your Honor. State offer states one and attachments. No objections. All right. Did you review the waiver of appeal paragraph with your attorney? Did you understand it? Did you sign it in all the appropriate places? Yes, Your Honor. Again, did you understand you have a right to jury trial, a right for you or your attorney to cross examine and confront any witnesses the state would call in the right to remain silent? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand that today the state will be presenting evidence in the form of witnesses' statements and police reports? But most importantly, there will be no live testimony. Did you understand? Yes, Your Honor. 
court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence states exhibits one in attachments. The court has reviewed the same. The court will find there's sufficient evidence to find you guilty. The court will defer finding of guilt as you've applied for deferred adjudication. Uh, probation, I'm gonna request a PSI and TAP evaluation. Uh, counsel, is there a need for a mental health evaluation or no? No. All right. Um, Ms. Abrams, if I set this for July 22nd or 25th, is that enough time or no? No, Judge, can I have at least till um, July 31st? Um, I can put it at August 1st. All right. All right. What's going to happen on August 1st? You're going to come back. I'm going to make my decision on your application based upon uh, the PSI report, the TAP evaluation, and any other evidence that's presented to the court. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Once you sign the reset form, be sure to speak with probation. They'll give you um, information on what needs to be done. And we'll be back on August 1st at 9. Thank you for the help, Judge. Thank oh, you. sure. No problem. Thanks, Judge. We are. All right. We're here for sentencing. Yes. Who's the prosecutor? Uh, myself, Your Honor. All right. Court is calling 2024 CR 2942, State of Texas versus Patricia Munoz. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Is that done for the state, Your Honor? Anthony, Can Anthony Cantrell for the defendant. Yeah. And are you Ms. Munoz? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You entered a plea of no contest to count one on June 10th. Excuse me, don't talk behind the court reporter. That's okay. You all just ask the deputy to move you to the end. On June 10th, you entered a plea of no contest to count one. The court found there was sufficient evidence to find you guilty. Court deferred finding of guilt as you had applied for deferred adjudication. You entered a plea to aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. State was silent on your application. And it appears that the punishment is to be assessed at a cap of 20. Yeah, we, I believe counts from what I remember, state was silent and then range of punishment being up to 20, but I believe. This is what you all have written. I apologize, I'm close, I'm like, that's my bad. Yes, Your Honor, yeah, in the event that you didn't grant deferred, then yes, that would be the request below the line. Yes, Your Honor. No. So your plea bargain agreement, according to what I'm reading, is her sentence is to be assessed at a cap of 20 years in the prison, and the state is silent on her application. Is that what I'm reading here? That's right. And then I'm just saying below the line, Your Honor, just what we had written, in the event that it was, that would be the request or the ask. All right. We're back on the record. So that the plea bargain can be clear. According to the plea bargain agreement, the state is going to be silent on your application for deferred adjudication. So that means they are not going to tell the court that they want you to have deferred. And they're not going to tell me that you, they don't want you to have deferred. They're saying that if I don't grant your application for deferred adjudication, the most time I can sentence you to is four years. Can you raise your right hand for me, please? Do you solemnly swear and affirm that the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth will help you, God? Yes, Your Honor. All right. You can lower your hand. What I just explained to you, do you understand it? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand the plea bargain agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any object objections to the state and your attorney adding that as a part of the plea bargain agreement? Oh, yeah. All right. So have both parties had a chance to review the PSI report? State. Yes, Your Honor. Defense. Yes, Your Honor. Any objections to the PSI report? State. Nothing from the state, Your Honor. Defense. No, Your Honor. All right. Any witnesses? State. Nothing from the state, Your Honor. Defense. Uh, just my client. All right. You may uh, inquire. Um, please state your full name for the record. Patricia Nicole Munoz. And Ms. Munoz, have you ever been convicted of any other felony? No. Uh, and you did you recently obtain your children in civil court? Yes. How many children do you have? Five. And um, are you taking care of them yourself? Yes. Do you have help from your mother and grandmother? Uh, yes. Mother in law. I yes, I do have a very good support system. Um, have you done things in civil court to help 
um, you with with respect to uh, taking care of your children. Yes, I have. And helping yourself. Yes, I have. Did you complete the violence uh, family violence prevent prevention services? Yes. And you did this on your own, right? Yes. And are you uh, in elite counseling at this time? Yes, I am. And have you done this on your own also? Yes. Um, and that was uh, also uh, suggested by the civil courts that you do that? Yes, sir. Okay, you don't have a family violence case though, do you? No, sir. Um, with respect to uh, drug use, when was the last time you used any drugs? In 2018. And so you've been clean since then? Yes, sir. And um, who do you work for now? For Santana Primary Healthcare. And how long have you been working with them? For uh, more than 10 years. So that's the only job you've ever had? Yes, sir. And you still have that job to this day? Yes, sir. Um, how has your life changed without your um, the father of, of the kid that was uh, Child Protective Services was involved in with him being out of the picture and, and you taking care of the children yourself? Um, taking accountability for my actions, um, bettering myself for my children as well as myself. Um, just having a good support system um, and pretty much just trying to better my life for me and my children. So with respect to this case in itself, um, there was an issue with one of the boyfriends, I mean, I'm sorry, one of the girlfriends of uh, the person you were dating at that time? Uh, no, it's uh, actually his. Uh, it's I'm sorry, this? you need to speak up. It's uh, it was uh, my daughter's father's niece, and uh, she was um, saying bad things about you. Yes, and that was because you were having the child custody issues. Uh, yes, and you, you you regret what happened in this case. Yes, I do. And if the judge were to give you deferred adjudication, will you follow all the rules and regulations, everything that she asked of you? Yes. Pass witness. Any I'm questions? A silent. No questions, sir. How many children do you have? I have five. What are their ages? Nine, seven, five, four, and one. All right, and who's helping you take care of these children? I am. Oops. I have my mother and I have my mother-in-law as well that are helping me. And is the CPS case, case still open? Yes, ma'am, it is. All right. And do you have documentation that she's doing well in CPS? Uh, judge, I, I know that she was awarded custody of the children and they're trying to terminate uh, the fathers, uh, one of the fathers who, who was involved in the CPS matter because he was not getting in, involved in that. I don't have the, the documentation with me at this time. All right. So who's your CPS worker? Angie Steinel. All right. If you all want to call the CPS worker, see if the CPS worker is, wants to zoom in so that I can ask some questions. All right, so if y'all step well, back, I'm sure she has the CPS well, workers also, number. No, a, Angie Steinow is the- No, CPS. your client's name. Patricia Munoz. Patricia Munoz. All right, could I have the parties on Patricia Munoz, please? Yes, Your Honor. All right, we're back on the record in 2024, CR 2942, State of Texas versus Patricia Munoz. Uh, we do have the caseworker by Zoom. Uh, could you pronounce your name for me, please? Angie Steinow. All right, Ms. Steinow, if you could raise your right hand. Do you solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you give will be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you, God? I do. All right, you can lower your hand. State your name for the record. Angie Steinow. Do you know Ms. Uh, Patricia Munoz? Yes, I do. All right, are you the caseworker involving uh, her family case? Yes, I am. All right, are you her caseworker or the children's caseworker or the family's caseworker? The family's caseworker with Family Drug Court. All right, can you tell me what is her status in uh, drug court? How is she doing? Uh, Ms. Munoz has com is almost completed um, the Family Drug Court program. Uh, she has successfully been engaging in individual counseling, family, um, family and um, group counseling with her um, domestic violence and her substance abuse treatment. Um, she has been randomly drug tested throughout the duration of the case, including hair follicles, which she has been, she has tested negative. negative. Um, she also has been reunified with her children since May the 3rd. And the department has done um, 
very frequent visits um, almost weekly and bi-monthly for the last couple of months. And she's been compliant, doing really well. When did she do to expire from or graduate from your drug court program? Uh, I believe it's the end of this month. She is in the stage five of family drug court, which is the the last stage. And do you all provide aftercare after graduation or no? Yes, we do. And she also has a sponsor and a relapse plan. And how long is your aftercare after she graduates? Um, It's at least six months and she will continue to do NA meetings. And in your aftercare program, how often are you all still supervising um, viewing the children to see that everything is going well? Um, we don't particularly um, observe the children as um, CPS will be closing out their case as well. Um, so that will be Miss Munoz going to the, um, the continued aftercare program on her own. All right. So then in your aftercare program, how do you specifically supervise Miss Munoz? Um, She will continue to report to her, um, one of the counselors at Elite Counseling. And how often does she report to Elite Counseling in the aftercare program? Uh, Twice a month. All right. And if there are any issues with her reporting in Elite Counseling, are you all made aware of that? Yes, we are. All right. Any other questions? Nothing from the state. No, you are. All right. A final question for me then. Do you think uh, she will be a danger? I'm assuming... You all don't think she would be a danger to her children. Otherwise, you would not be closing out the case. But do you have any concerns um, about her interaction with the children or her any concerns for her children if she were allowed to be placed on probation in this court? No, I don't. All right. Do you think any there are any conditions that this court should set to make sure she stays on the right path? No. All right. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you for zooming in. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. All right. All right. Court's going to sentence you to eight years deferred adjudication. Uh, I always ask for parenting classes, but if you completed parenting classes, you'll just need to provide the parenting classes that you've completed through family drug court. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. All right. There's going to be proof of employment within 40 days. There should be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. Judge, may I interject on that is what she has been doing for the last 10. Doing what? uh, Health care provider. And she's her whole life she's been doing it. Well, here's the thing. I don't allow people to be health care providers when they're on probation in this court. If you want to be a health care provider, then there needs to be notice given to whoever you're employed with saying, I know this is what she's charged with. I know she's on probation for this amount of time. And the person that you're providing the health care for also needs to be made aware of that. And I need that in writing saying that they have no problem. Otherwise, you're not allowed to do it. Yes, sir. And let me just tell you, I'm not treating you any differently than anyone else. The reason why I do that is because sometimes these health home health care providers They would just hire people. They go into people's homes. Nobody knows that this person is on probation, has a theft, has an abusive history, and they're leaving them with somebody vulnerable. So I'm not going to allow her to be a home health care provider probation unless she provides a letter from her employer and that employer states and it's notarized that they're aware that she's on probation for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon and they're aware of her criminal history. And whomever she is providing the health care to the individual, they need to provide a notarized letter saying, we know that she's on probation for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Here is her history and it needs to be notarized and they have no objections. Otherwise, she will not be able to do that. Understood. There should be regular reporting by Zoom or in person. There's to be regular random UAs. You can do the UA or the patch. Probation will explain to you the patch costs more. There's to be no contact with Miranda Medellin. And for the record, the court did not receive any documentation in the PSI from Miranda Medellin. And there's also to be no contact with Renee Vasquez the second, 
There's to be 120 hours of community service restitution. I'm going to order parenting classes. If you provide proof that you completed parenting classes due felony, uh, family drug court, that will be deemed satisfied and the community service hours will be deemed satisfied. Bill visits one time per month for four months. And that one time per month is to begin November of 2024. I'm trying to time it a little bit probation with when CPS ends their contact with her. There is to be um, drug treatment, or I should say continued drug treatment with elite counseling and you to report two times per month with them. Uh, probation, is there anything else you need? Uh, no, Judge. Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? No, Your Honor. All right, did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with your attorney? Did you understand it and sign it? Yes, Your Honor. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed Judge, to own. We, uh, there is no family violence in this case. No, there is. There is. No, there is. She's not related to any of those people. And we, dis is. we discussed that. We discussed that last time uh, also. Um, prior yeah. This is the niece. These are all family members. And she said it's the niece of the father of her child. Did she not say that? Yes. These are family members. So there is an affirmative finding of family violence. And because there's an affirmative finding of family violence, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. And with regards to the affirmative finding of family violence, it's in the family code. I follow it. If for some reason people believe my interpretation of the family code is incorrect, we can always revisit that. But for now, my interpretation of the family code is this is an affirmative finding of family violence and my hands are tied. I can't say I'm not going to have an affirmative finding of family violence. Do you understand? Yes. Sir. All right. We're off the record. Uh, make sure you stay in contact with your probation officer. If there is an issue, let the court know and we'll take it up. You understand? Yes, Your Honor. Good luck to you. Thank you. Let's get the facts straight. She loves a verbal ashtray. Never blowing smoke when she gets pissed. She's quick to castrate. Love her on a good day. Love her on a bad day. Either way, she's here to stay, stay, stay. 